going on everybody hit pause here as promised I am making the summary video right now so I want to try to move through this as fast as possible I am using shadow play I don't have much time before my audio craps out or my dog starts barking or I have a coughing fit or somebody comes home and something stupid happens so I want to like I said I want to move through this as fast as possible here is the final terrain um, well it's not final I've gone in and broken it up I should put a Godzilla footprint that'd be pretty funny but um, you can see the material on here it holds up pretty decently. I've got grass on the flats. I've got a uh, transition from dirt. I've got rock on the cliffs. And if I edit it in any way, uh, let's say with the sculpt tool, uh, let's put a let's go ahead and put a Godzilla footprint over here. Let me hold Shift. So there's a there's a T-Rex footprint. It's a really big T-Rex here you can see that everything totally updates we got grass on the flats okay and do kind of whatever I want to it now at this point okay could make this a lake or whatever um, textures I didn't don't even have to bother looking to be honest it, it I know it works everything's solid so there it is in demo action and now let's show it how it's done so three layers like I said rock dirt grass they're almost identical uh, each one is a material function. Now if I take a look at the material function, what we have here, it's a world aligned texture. You can find that over here, world aligned texture. Okay, My main texture is going into the texture 2D. I have a texture size piped to a vector 3 input named large size. Okay, I have a static boolean here set to true because I do want to use the alpha channel. Okay. I also have another world aligned texture. This is the small size because if you look, this blends between large and small. Okay, so as you get closer, a new texture blends in. Alright. So I have one for the large size, one for the small size, and I have an input to control those sizes. I also have I'll get to this in a second. I also have a uh, the same exact thing for normals except you have to use world aligned normal. Do not use world aligned texture like I'm using here, use world aligned normal. Okay, these uh, this is the normal large, normal small. They are sharing the same input so that they line up here. Here is the distance blend algorithm. It's very simple. We take a di uh, pixel depth, we divide it by how far away we want the blend to happen. Okay, again, this is an input. It's called blend distance. It is a scalar input. We divide the pixel depth by this value. This 256 here is just because I have use a preview value checked. Okay and I want to have that. We clamp it and we use that to lerp these two together. Okay. Now in this case for the rock when I zoom in um, I don't replace the texture entirely that way this dark patch from the from the large size version doesn't go away when I zoom in it in fact multiplies. So what I first want to do is lerp my small size from a 1 because remember if it's fully 1 and you multiply it there's no change if it gets lower then it starts to darken okay so I'm using that and I'm multiplying that by the large size and remember you always want to output from the XYZ if you, unless you want to do XY or just Z or something um, in this case I'm using XYZ uh, this texture has an alpha channel which is the height map for the rock I am masking that out as the alpha channel and I'm throwing that to an output okay you can output whatever you want in the function. Okay, it'll output anything. So that's what I'm doing. I'm outputting the height map. Okay, I have hard coded values here for roughness and, and metallic. Zero for metallic, 0.9 for roughness. I want it relatively rough. I'm also lerping the two uh, here. Now uh, you lerp the uh, large size in B and the small size in A, and then you use your distance blend here for the lerping. So that is the rock layer in its entirety. Okay, I don't want to change anything there. I will show you now the dirt function, which is happens to be pretty much identical. Okay, same thing. Texture object goes into the world line texture. I've got large size, small size. Okay, same texture goes in here. Static Boolean true. This has a height map on it. Uh, even though it's not very good, but you can see it showing up right there. Can't zoom in any further. Same thing with the normal map again. World align normal. World align normal. Both piped in. I got it 
commented here for large and small. Uh, the texture size is the only thing you need and so they share the same size node so the same input will control both of those. This dirt does not uh, multiply as you get closer it in fact uh, completely replaces so I'm not lerping to one and then multiplying I'm lerping straight from large to small okay so remember large in B small in A large in B small in A same exact method for the alpha channel pixel depth divided by uh, some kind of scalar value we want to be able to control this when we're looking at it on the actual map don't forget to clamp it that's important otherwise things are going to start going like uh, crazy saturated dark colors again hard hard snapped uh, uh, values here but I can edit this any anytime I want and don't forget that you need to make material attributes okay you can find that here make material attributes don't forget to pipe everything into there and don't forget to throw it to an output that's that layer okay that is the dirt layer let's close that down the grass layer is slightly different. I'm actually using uh, material function 2 uh, test here. This layer is much simpler than the other layers. I'm not doing any kind of a distance blend on the grass. I am simply using landscape coordinates multiplied by a input so that I can control how big I want the grass and I'm simply inverting the green channel for the roughness. This I never... actually I'm outputting this texture sample right here is the Perlin noise that is available in the um, starter content stuff. So you just type in noise or Perlin and you can find this texture here. I'm using that as a mix map as opposed to trying to use the height map coming out of here which just doesn't work well on something as detailed as grass and as, as, as finely detailed as grass. You know, very slick blades on top of each other. Uh, even the normal maps are hard to get those to work very well. So I'm outputting that. I'm using a texture coordinate here of something I don't really feel I need to control. Uh, as 64 size. It's got to be landscape coordinates because remember we're using landscape. If you use a world blend text, uh, the world align texture, the texture size takes care of that. It just uses world units. doesn't give a shit if it's on a landscape or on, or on a rock or an object or a person or whatever. Okay, so that's the texture sample and I output that as a height map instead. Okay, and uh, I'm not worrying about metallic because it's zero. Don't forget to output the result. Done. Okay, that's that layer. Now the actual material itself that blends them all together is here okay so we bring in our function our cliff layer and we make sure we have parameters tied into all the three different things okay blend distance cliff small cliff large okay the result goes up to a matte layer blend standard so if I go here to blend there is a uh, simple stain standard is what you want simple if I bring this out and show it it says blends all attributes of two materials except the normal map so you don't want to use that one this uh, material blends every aspect of all, all of the material attributes okay so what I'm doing is I'm using a slope mask here okay that is also available right here slope mask just drag it out you get all these things I piped in parameters to all of these things. The only thing you don't need to worry about is the tangent normal. You can use that if you wanted to. You can actually throw a normal map in there, but it will affect how everything shows up. Okay? So I just, like I said, I threw parameters in here to match. So slope angle, so cliff slope angle. Fall off power, cliff slope fall off, cheap contrast, cliff slope contrast. Okay? And then what I do is I apply my mix map. So the first thing I do, remember, each each of these is outputting a height map, okay? So I'm using a height map to get it to blend in between the cracks. It doesn't really show up here, but it does work on the on the actual terrain. Okay, so the height map comes here, and the first thing I want to do is I want to give it uh, the ability to pump the power. So I have a scalar parameter here called cliff height power, defaults to 4, just so I can power it up or power it down, just to increase the contrast there. We want to subtract that from the slope value, okay? then we need to be able to control the contrast of that so we divide that by a, another value here okay and what I'm doing normally uh, on a normal mix map you just take this straight into there okay and that will give you like uh, it'll just take your alpha and um, sharpen it up based on like say you know uh, uh, like another vertex color or something like that but in this case I also want to multiply that with the slope mask okay so I am dividing by this multiplied by the slope mask which blends the two together 
Okay, don't forget to clamp it. In this case, I need to invert it because I want to make sure that the cliffs are on the side because the slope mask does actually white out uh, the top. So a standard slope mask will be like, you know, for putting snow on top of something or something like that. But if you want to make sure you're masking something on the side, you've got to invert it. So I use that as the alpha channel. So the top material is my cliff, okay, and that's the result here. Remember, this is a full material attribute here. I could break this out, okay, and all of these things are in fact in there. Not all of them, okay, I'm not using opacity, I'm not using world position offset or displacement or anything like that, but uh, if you do need to come and do any more edits to it, you need to break the material attributes, okay, then you can remake them if you want. So I'm doing, okay, okay quit just right clicking. Top material is the cliff. The bottom material, the base material here is actually going to the dirt. Okay, now the dirt layers is the, the main, is the one layer I don't have to worry about any blending, okay, because that's the one that's going over everything. So it's, uh, all I need is, is my parameters here. Dirt small size, dirt blend distance, dirt size, a large size here, okay, and the result. I don't care really about the height map because I'm not using it. So that was the base layer. Okay, the next blend the top material is the blend already that's happening between the cliff and the dirt. Okay, so that's the top material. Because remember, what I end up with is a full material attribute coming out of here. So now I want to blend that by my grass. Okay, and the alpha that I'm using for that is from here, from the grass. Now, it's exactly the same. Okay, um, I'm actually not using this one here. Remember my grass material is much simpler. All I have here is grass size, okay? So the height map from that, which is that noise Perlin map, goes into this exact same thing, okay? Same exact thing here for the slope mask. I literally copied and pasted it, okay, and just changed the names. So I've got, again, slope angle, grass slope angle. Fall off power goes to grass slope fall off, cheap contrast, grass slope contrast, okay? I power up the height map with a parameter so I can dial that in and out. I subtract that from the slope. I divide that actually in this case I don't use this. I divide that by a simple cheap contrast for that. Clamp it, invert it, use that as the alpha channel. Output done. That's it. That's the whole thing. Uh, it does compile rather heavy. It's not mobile friendly. Uh, there are ways to optimize it down. Um, as you can see, like with my grass material, it's much simpler than the others because it doesn't distance blend. Um, but I felt like the rock needed it because from a distance it it's too noticeably tiling. And as I get close to that, it's too noticeably fuzzy. So I did a distance blend. Um, very very simple and again I'm using world aligned there because the the um, the rock is ending up on the vertical surfaces more than anything right I'm also using world aligned for the dirt because that happens in the transition between between the two I'm not using world aligned on the grass because it only shows up on the flats I don't care right so and then what you do is you make a material instance out of that I probably didn't do as good of a job as I should have in categorizing these things. I only categorized the texture sizes. I didn't even put the grass size in there. Um, but you end up with the slope angles, okay, which are vector 3 values. So if I change this 1.1, okay, my grass will, will move. Uh, it's still compiling the shaders, so it's not going to do anything right now. But um, all of these come out here. I've got uh, this is the blend. The blend distance is how far away does the rock um, blend to the low, to the the higher quality version? As I get closer, right? You can see from here, it's very pretty low res. Come here, it gets higher res. Um, and I do again still have the ability to change those sizes. I'm using 4,000 to 200. Okay, the dirt size. The dirt really, it's so fine of a dirt. I don't really need this. So I'm only blending from 2,000 to 1,000. Probably an optimization would definitely be to remove the um, the size blend on the dirt. But I do feel like as you get closer, it does get a little fuzzy. So I decided to do that. For that, the grass does not blend. So you can see from a distance, you can probably pick up the tiling. You can see it pretty clearly right there. 
but as I get closer, the the grass texture itself uh, lends itself rather well, uh, and you can see that it's blending in and out of the dirt. And here's the values that I used. Um, I'm not really showing you guys the textures. It's a big balance. Don't get me wrong. It's it's a it's a pretty pretty big balance between all these values and the contrast and things of your height maps and stuff like that. So you're gonna have to tweak uh, quite a bit, uh, but it is possible to get this working and get everything uh, going good. So like I said, I'm just using you know this blend distance, the cliff height contrast. You know, I'm just setting that to straight one. Uh, the height power I set to two. If I power that up and I take a look at the dirt here, cliff height power, I'll boost that up. Okay, you can see it really sharpens out the dirt there. If I lower that down too much, you can see that it starts to, let me, let me get off that stupid flashy tool. Okay, it starts to kind of blend out, but I can total real-time ability to, to adjust this. Uh, like the cliff slope angle is 1.1 right now. I can say, hey, you know, maybe 1.2. Okay, that's more dirt. 1.4, almost completely dirt, right? So the cliff only shows up on the very, very, very edges. If I change that to like too low, I probably get rid of the dirt altogether. Okay, so I should probably should have named that dirt, but who cares, right? So I found that 1.2 looked pretty decent. And again, the the grass, I can boost the grass up, no problem. Grass, uh, say like one, you get way more grass in there. Okay. Or if I go down to like 0.8, I can actually wipe the grass out. It's, uh, again, like I said, it's a big balance. So uh, if you go too far down in the slope, you need to, to um, like maybe change the fall off here or something, right? So you can bring it, you can bring it back. Uh, it's the slope contrast. You can lower that. So, you know, you can get the grass more faded out. You, you basically have full, you know, kind of workability to pull it in and out and, and check your fades and things like that. Uh, there's, there's obviously better ways to do it, but that's it. That's it in a nutshell, and that's the summary of, of everything that I did. Um, it did take four videos worth, and I do mess things up while I'm doing it, but in the end, it doesn't really look too too terrible and you can do more layers and all that stuff you can do this in UDK you just have to break all those nodes down um, and do it from there so thanks for watching hit pause signing off